for supper tonight, I'm having pizza di patate, which just proves that I don't speak Italian very well. Potato pizza, which is something that's fairly common in Italy. I've had it in two or three different regions of Italy, but I've never been able to find it over here, in North America anywhere. I'm sure it exists if you go to one of the larger Little Italy communities like in Toronto or New York City or Boston or someplace like that. I'm sure you can you can find it. But here in the Maritimes, it's a rare item. This is the first time I've ever made one. It's sort of a compilation of, of several recipes that I just finished reading online, taking bits of pieces from here and there to make what I thought I would like. And it looks fairly similar, I guess, to what I've had in Italy. Anyway, I've just removed it from the pan. It's sitting on a cutting board, cooling down a little bit. I'll take a few minutes now and show you the process, how I made the thing. Then we'll come back and slice it and uh, see what it tastes like. Well, like most pizzas, it's really quite easy to make. I'm using a fresh dough that I buy already made in a grocery store over in Maine. I think they're probably commonly available everywhere, but I uh, take the lazy way out. I've tried the packaged doughs and they don't compare to this at all. This finishes up being almost like a dough from a pizzeria. Uh, then you have a mixture of about a quarter of a cup of olive oil, uh, sea salt, black pepper. I chopped up one clove of garlic and there's probably a teaspoon or so of rosemary in there. But anyway, you can mix those to your own personal taste, how much salt you want, or pepper, or rosemary, or if you, whether or not you want garlic. One potato, which I'm going to slice on my mandolin. Uh, one onion. I probably won't use the entire onion. Cheese is optional. Uh, I don't think, when I had them in, in Italy, I don't think they had a cheese, but I'm convinced they had some sort of a, a white sauce as the base, but... Maybe not. I can't seem to find a recipe that has the white sauce as a base, base anyway. I was given a gift uh, uh, that I could go to a, a cheese shop, which is about well, three quarters of an hour drive from here down in Machias, Maine, cheese and wine shop. And uh, no limit. Friends of mine gave me a gift. I could go down and get as much cheese as I wanted. Well, I didn't bankrupt them, but I got three different kinds of European cheeses. This one I've had before, both in France and in Spain. The cheese shop is selling it as a Spanish cheese. Well, it's actually a Basque cheese. It's made in the Basque country of southern uh, France and northern Spain made from sheep's milk. Monjego, which I'm probably really butchering the Spanish. I don't speak Spanish at all, really. But anyway, very nice cheese. I like it very much, and I've just taken a, bit, a vegetable peeler and done some shavings to place here and there on the top. Anyway, we'll now see what uh, how this thing unfolds. I just use a rolling pin on a floured surface to sort of get the... Uh, crust started, flattening it down some anyway, and then just take it with your hands and keep stretching the edges until it's roughly round. I do spray the uh, little pizza pan that's going on. I no longer have a pizza stone in the oven, so I have to bake them on a pan. I find if you spray it, they come off a little easier. Anyway, this is cold out of the refrigerator, so I've done it first, and while I'm doing the rest of the preparation, I'll just set it off to one side to let the dough warm up and possibly even rise a little bit. Not sure how well this will show up on the camera. I don't have a, a great video camera here, but this thing is called a mandolin, a French mandolin, and this particular model is authentic from Paris and whatever, or France anyway, and very expensive. You can buy oriental versions that are much cheaper, which is what I wish I had, I guess, now. But, uh, it will do many different kinds of slices for you, any thickness that you want, julienne or, or whatever. And I'll show you what's happening down underneath here. Gives you a nice uniform slice, and you can see your fingers through it. So it's the recipe recommends a sixteenth of an inch. Well, I don't know if that's a sixteenth or not, but they also show in the in one of the books that I was looking at, they show a photograph of somebody holding the potato slice, and you can see their fingers through it. So I think that's about the right consistency. You want to, it's only going to be in the oven for 12 minutes or so, 475 degree oven, and you don't want it to 
you know, burn up or to turn to mush, either one, you still want it to have some texture left, but you also don't want raw potato when it comes out, so you have to slice it very thinly. I'll be doing the same thing to get some thin slices of um, onion to add to the top, but I won't bother to show you that. I didn't measure, but I think that's about a 10 inch pizza pan. And I did weigh the piece of pizza dough. It's uh, about 12 ounces of, of pizza dough. I could have used less, it's a bit on the thick side. Anyway, using the olive oil and a pastry brush, add as much as you like, and I like. <laughs> Try to get some of the garlic on there too, and the rosemary's coming out in there quite nicely. Be basting the top again once the vegetables are on, but this is just to get a base to lay them down on. No sauce, at least the recipes that I've been able to find don't have a sauce. So I'm convinced the ones that I've had in Italy had some sort of a sauce, but just now uh, arrange your potato slices. Try not to. I mean, you want to overlap them sort of shingle fashion a bit, but you don't want to get them on there too thickly because they won't, uh, won't cook properly. I think for this size pizza, my one potato is going to be more than enough. I'll have to save the remaining potato and do a potato scallop or something tomorrow with it, I guess. I think I will brush the uh, olive oil on top of that. It might be a little more difficult to do when I add the onions. Onions and cheese are both optional. I know there was cheese on the ones that I had in Italy, but I don't recall if they had onions on or not. But according to the recipe books that I've been reading, that's according to your taste. I sliced these onions on the, the mandolin so they're the same thickness as the potato. Once again, I, I did about half an onion and I've got too much. I just want enough to lightly cover over the top a bit here. Looks like I'm going to have vegetables to save for a potato scallop tomorrow. And now the uh, Manjago sheep's milk cheese. Not a heavy covering of it either, just these few shavings that I did. Mozzarella, provolone, parmesan, any of those more traditional Italian type cheeses would work very well. And here we are ready for the oven. 475 degrees for roughly 12 minutes. 12 to 15. I'm going to check it at 12, make sure it's not burning. Well, it's been cooling down for several minutes. I'll give an attempt at carving this thing. smells delicious because I love both garlic and rosemary. That's the primary smells coming off it is garlic and rosemary. And I guess that sort of does look like the ones that I've had in Italy. I've been thinking all along that maybe theirs had a sauce on them, but it could be just the cheese. Mmm. Tastes every bit as good as it looks. I hope you give it a try. Let me know what to do. I'm talking with a mouthful here. Thank you very much for watching.